What's going on guys? So it's 7.40 in the morning and I'm off on an adventure to find items to resell on eBay for profit. And right now I'm going to the bins. If you don't know what the bins are, its official name is the Google Outlet Store. They're across the country, not every city or town has them. So your best bet is to look up on Google, Google Outlet Store to see if there's one near you. And this is a place that they call it the bins because items are rolled out in bins and you rummage through them to find exactly what you want. Now even though they all operate basically under the same concept, they do run a little differently as far as size and pricing and how often they change the aisles. My local one that I go to has five aisles of clothing and three aisles of hard goods. Now the biggest difference I see because I hear from other people describing their bins in their videos is how often or the process for changing out aisles. Now my location constantly changes aisle after aisle. You just saw them removing and now here they are immediately bringing out that new aisle. Now here is a clip of everybody going to that new aisle that was just brought out and while everybody is around that aisle they immediately go and change the next one. And this goes on and on. Non Another difference that I often hear in videos is where people mentioning where the items at their bins come from. Many people think that they're just unsold items that came from the local stores. For mine, and that's the only one I can speak on, that is not true. All my Goodwills locally write prices on items with markers and very, very rarely ever see that at the bins. My bins donations come from either directly at the bins, at places that are called donation centers, which are not stores, but like drop-off spots, or trucks like you see in this picture that are all over the place, and they will fill up, and then they come, take the truck, bring it right to the bins. So all my items at the bins are direct donations, and that's why I'm able to find such good items. And pretty much everything goes by the pound at my location. Clothing and hard goods are $1.92 per pound. Books are 50 cents. Games, CDs, etc. are a dollar. And if, unless you have a really big heavy item, then they'll charge you a few bucks. All right, home from the bins. And usually when I get home from the bins, eat before I go. Because I go first thing when they open, I leave at quarter to seven. So I'm going to have a late breakfast. And then I get around, take a little break, um, rehydrate, have some food. Then I'll go out in the garage and start going through all my stuff. But I just came home and I have a visitor outside the pool. Check this out. It started to rain and he's running away so I don't know if we're going to catch him. He's going up the tree. I get these things constantly. They're always going across the power lines in the back. Oh, he fell down. He's coming back to the pool. I think he sees me. All right, so we're home from the bins. I will share with you what I picked up today and for the reasons that if you're looking for ideas on what you can find at the bins, of course, everyone is different depending on where you live. I'm gonna show you the type of items I found today and I will give you comps on everything. I'll show you some sell-through rates, what these items are selling for, what they've sold for, so you know why I picked them up and you know that you can find them and as long as you're paying the right price, Make yourself some money too. But before we do that, I have a few items I gotta get packed up. I've already got two of them done. I got a few more to do. So I'll show you those real quick, how I pack them, and what they sell for. Give you some more comps. All right here is a pair of women's Nike Golf 
Just like a side zip capri pant. Nothing special. Only sold them for 12 bucks. Picked them up at the bins. They're going to ship in a 11 by 9 I believe this is. Poly mailer. First class. It weighs 11 ounces. 11 ounces from Miami, Florida to New York. $4.68 first class. Alright, this item I already packed up. It's just a vintage brass cherub. Single candle wall sconce. And um, going from Miami to New Jersey. Cost five dollars and change, 14 ounces, first class rate. This item was a Nerf and Strike Elite 25 round magazine drum. I picked this up all the time. I don't mess with the guns because they're just so big that it, shipping becomes a lot of money for the buyer and the guns aren't usually that expensive. So I grab all the magazines and people buy them. This one sold for $12.75 and it weighs in at 13 ounces. Going to Virginia, cost four dollars and change. And the drums fit perfectly into the 8x6x4 box. The item I got to pack is a pair of men's Lululemon joggers. Found these at the Goodwill bins. By weight, probably about $1.50 cost. Took an offer of $25 on these. They will also go into a poly 9x11 mailer. First class weight. And the Lululemon pants, Miami to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. 13 ounces, $5.72. First class. Alright, so now that I got my orders packed up, I'm going to go on my phone and I'm going to send offers to Likers Watchers. Um, got a handful of things I can send offers on. Sometimes just taking a few dollars off an item makes the difference and makes somebody buy it. Now let's take a look at today's pretty good clothing haul, I would say. Alright, the very first item I found this morning. Doors opened at 8 o'clock. I was there like 10 of. We went in. The second bin I looked in, found this beautiful Carhartt jacket. I found one about three weeks ago. I sold it last week. It was a similar jacket. It wasn't the heavy canvas. It was this more of like a nylon material, waterproof. But it did not have a hood. This one is hooded. The other one had a corduroy collar. So, great jackets. The other one sold for $60. Unfortunately, the people cut off the hanging tag. And with Carhartts, there is a model number in the bottom left corner. I believe this one is J113 from what I'm seeing on the comps. I have to look into it. This is a great jacket. It's quilted on the inside. Thick and heavy. Alright. Pelagic. Pelagic. Not exactly sure of the pronunciation. Great fishing clothing. I'm in South Florida. The boating and fishing capital of the United States supposedly. And I find this often. There's swim trunks, I found shoes, pants, shirts of this brand, and they all have good resale value. This is called the Exotech, and this long sleeve hooded shirt has very good comps. All right here we have a vintage Russell, <clears throat> made in USA, sweatshirt Miami Dolphins. Even without a tag, I would know it would be vintage by the Miami Dolphins logo. That's their vintage logo. Does have some staining and discoloration. So this is going to need a good wash, oxy-clean soak, and hopefully it comes out. Even if some stains exist, the vintage stuff still will sell. Russell Athletic, made in USA, size large. Okay, I found one polo shirt today. This is a polo Ralph Lauren. That's the vintage tag. The white writing with the box. It's a size medium. But it'll still sell. I can usually get easy 15 bucks for these polo shirts. Alright, this isn't that expensive. Reebok New England Patriots football. Um, just like a windbreaker pullover. Reebok size medium. And this will probably go for about 15 bucks as well. Alright, found a nice Lululemon jacket today. It's got these extremely long uh, wrist cuffs with the thumb hole. Same way on the bottom, so it's just like kind of design as small pockets in the front their iconic logo looks like an outline of a woman's hair but it's supposedly the letter a just in their design for athletica which is the company that makes lululemon and you'll see the stitching and you'll see this on the back of i know on men's pants and maybe some of the women's as well see this stitching pattern and you'll see that on the butt of pants you see what that is 
that is the logo so even if you don't have a something right away to see you see that stitching that's an easy way to spot it and of course on the back has their reflective logo again all right we got some shorts this pair which looks a little crazy the brand is called loudmouth if i pull down the zipper you'll see it right here loudmouth and just like this says loudmouth all their patterns are bright and very loud and these actually have really good comps anywhere from 20s to 50 dollars of course i guess depending on the pattern so i'm thinking like a good 30 35 dollars maybe even 40 on these here's the logo i don't know if you're gonna make it out in camera a little lm and inside it says loudmouth and this is a golfing brand you see loudmouth golf and i believe this is the golfer john daly i believe this is his company all right i found two true religion today the first one true religion cargo shorts frayed ends but these are only shorts these are not cutoffs cargo pockets heavy white iconic stitching for true religion has all the proper tags has the silver stitching down the side has the logos on the back of the rivets so these are good to go there is one distressed hole right here but it doesn't matter i've sold them like that before and worse and another pair of jew religion shorts these are called the ricky as you see right here ricky relaxed straight so these we show size 34 these were jeans at one point full length but somebody cut them off so now you would think up oh, they're cut offs they're pointless nope look at the comps ones that were jeans and now cut into shorts still for sale in about the $30 range so again silver stitch down the side of the tags these are good to go logo on the back of the rivets so I wasn't hesitant even though they're cut no problem all right I found two pairs of Levi's today both vintage spotted them across the bin when they were out of reach and I knew they were vintage 501s and when I look inside on these 501s are the button flies always check the back of the top button there's going to be a stamp number I believe that is 524 and when you look inside there's different variations of tags from the years made in USA so that makes the Levi's made in USA very desirable now there are Levi's that are vintage but not made in USA Mexico and a few other places so don't just go by the USA like t-shirts and then see if you look on the back of the tag on the numbers right there 524 that number matches the number on the top of the button that's one way of verifying they are real look at the back of the rivets you got LS SF and Co or LS and Co San Francisco and these are dated 1999 got a pair of black 550s not as desirable as the 501s or the 560s but since they were vintage I knew they were vintage right away because this one says every garment guaranteed and that's a vintage one so if I look inside on these this one has the paper tag with the black bat wing they call it made in USA if I look on the back on the codes you'll see the top of the button 554 and right there first digits 554 that matches good rivets and these are made in 2000 and this one has a blank red tab don't think that's a fraud compared to red tabs that have the Levi's on it blank tab is just a common occurrence they say one out of every like 100 labels that is stitched in the factory come out blank because they have to change the white thread the spool or whatever it is so one label passes through and only gets the R and not the spell out 
So that even makes it more desirable because one out of every 100 pairs is blank. All right, I found a few hard goods. The label broke on this, or the wrapper I should say. Just the University of Florida alumni, but I believe it's new, never used. Perfect condition. Not a big deal, I don't know offhand. Probably only 10, 15 bucks on that. Found a pair of Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars in a pink. Made in Vietnam, but great condition. And these are the type of shoes that these in vans, you never really see worn out soles on them. So as long as they're clean and good condition, especially that it was pink, it was a good colorway, worth to pick up for me. Found a Logitech PlayStation remote. It just needs a little clean, but the knobs, which will get worn, so always check that, are good. All the buttons have a nice spring to them. And when you look in the back, the battery compartment, no corrosion. All right, that's today's video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.